Low connectivity. There we go. Okay. Good afternoon, folks. This is Jim Hodson coming to you from uh, Cowtown Aircrafters in Justin, Texas today. Uh, we're here to, uh, to talk with uh, Lanny Parcells, uh, Cowtown Aircrafters. Uh, good afternoon, Lanny. How are you? I'm good. Hello, everybody. This is a, this is a do over. We've, uh, uh, we've done a couple of these with Lanny now after we brought the, uh, the bird dog up here, but the sound quality has been so bad. And we think we've got that solved now. So Lanny was kind enough to say he'd uh, he'd work with us on this. So let's go back and take a look at the bird dog, and you can tell us a little bit about what y'all are doing and, and how the work is coming. Okay. Well, come on back here. As you can as you can see, we've been uh, we've been chipping away on stripping paint. Uh, the paint stripping process is is very temperature sensitive, and we've been kind of lucky because we had a pretty warm November. So. Okay. All hands on deck when the when the temperature's over 70 degrees, we're stripping paint because we can do other things when it gets cold, but we can't strip paint. So, Mike James says hi, Jim and Lanny. Hi, hey. Mike. Hey, Mike. So, uh, so t tell us a little bit. I know we've gone over this before, but I don't know who's heard what anymore. Tell us a little bit about what the process is to strip the paint because the the airplane looks pretty bare right now. Yeah, it's it's where it's it's 90 percent done and 90 percent to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. The hard part's on the bottom of the fuselage, which that, is laying yeah. on your back work. So, so you so you put it you put a chemical on the yeah. On the we surface. actually use a chemical, to, and the stripper we, we're using is uh, the manufacturer is called CB, and it's R two fifty six, and it's a it's a professional paint stripper. You, you okay. know, you you couldn't go to Walmart and buy this stuff. This is you okay. got to have a license to buy it. Now, so. do you have to wear uh, gloves or gloves we, or protective gear? Yeah, when you're we using we wear this face stuff? shields and and protective gloves and long okay. sleeves and. So is it just kind of a paint on wipe off, or does it sit there on the surface for well, a while? It it depends on the temperature and it depends on the paint, obviously. Okay. So this airplane obviously was uh, it was it was probably when the Forestry Service got it, they had it professionally painted in the forestry markings which they stripped it and okay. put a, an epoxy primer on it and a urethane the yellow and the green original finish with some type of a urethane paint okay probably 70s vintage type of a paint so your average Joe paint stripper wasn't going to do a very good job on it so we had to get the big guns out so okay. to speak so so the process like like you were asking me about the process is you we we painted painted on really thick like your Almost like you're icing a cake. Okay. It's, a, it's about a quarter of an inch thick is what you want on it. Oh, really? That much? Yeah. Okay. And then and then, you 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 really have to just let it sit depending on the on the on the temperature. If it's too hot, it'll it'll dry up. Okay. Before it has right. a, t a chance to activate. Okay. And if it's too cold, it'll just sit there. So there's a happy spot right in the middle. Okay. So what is that? 70s, low 80s. Yeah. Mid kind of mid. I'd say optimum is mid 70s to mid 80s. Anything okay. hotter than that then it dries out before it gets to eat the paint. So now I, th I think most of most of the airplane has been stripped now, right? Yes. So how long is it, uh, has it taken you to do, because I know you've I've seen the wings and the cowlings and the fuselage, how long has that taken? Oh, uh, well, probably, probably around 100 hours, okay. about 100 man hours okay. worth, of, worth of work between the four of us working on it. Okay. Well, Mike James says that the audio is perfect, and Rich Garrett said it's breaking up. So we're gonna we're gonna go a happy medium <laughs> yeah. in between. Uh, it's reasonable. So I know you've you've said that you've made some discoveries as you were going over the airplane. One of them was you said that you'd, you'd seen some uh, apparent damage to the airplane. Yeah, the 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 the, the landing gear has obviously been damaged at this some side point. Or the other side? Bo actually, both sides. Okay, both sides. You want to point that out? Okay. Well, you can. If you can see some some spots right here, this this area right here is is actually bondo that's been put on some dents, so it it, okay. it got beat up right here, and then this row of fasteners right along here, okay. you can see those fasteners. Those are those are blind rivets that have been re have replaced some other fastener in the past. Okay, so those should have looked like the other ones. Yeah, that are they in? should be a solid shank brazier okay. head rivet, and these are a a, a pop rivet basically, a heavy duty pop okay. rivet that's been put on there. And what really alerted us to, uh, if, if they were really nicely installed yeah. and everything was was copacetic, we probably would have just kept going. But the problem okay. is that as you can, there's gaps under the heads, which means the rivet head is not set up against the structure. Okay. So that either indicates that they were put in improperly, and there's a, there's a gap between the head, which means they don't have the the strength that they should have. So are you going to have to replace those? Or well, we're going to we're going to jack it up and inspect it. Okay. But it it either means that they were put in poorly, 
or something's moving and they're and okay. the rivets are moving in the holes so there okay. could be some broken structure or some loose structure holes are too big on the other side which makes the rivet work okay. we call what, it working what what causes this is this hard landing it it's probably a combination of field repair okay and then time use okay yeah okay. so if if it was repaired in the field like most of them have been in their lifetime all right and then it goes back into service and you put another thousand hours on it, it's probably time to look at it again and make okay. sure that that field repair is holding up. Because we know very little about the history of this airplane other than the fact that it's, that, I believe it's a 1952 airplane. Right. Yeah. And that it went to the, uh, to the Army and the Army used them as, uh, as artillery spotters. Uh, and then uh, after that, we really don't know what, uh, what's happened to this airplane or what its, uh, what its use was until it went to the Forest Service. Mm -hmm. So that kind of thing. So why don't you show us around and show us okay. what else you've learned about it? Well, so so we it, it does have some some little bondo places here and there. I think that was probably, you know, when the, when the military had it, it was a it was a utility vehicle effectively. Right. So yeah, they were kind of treated like a tractor or something. Okay. So they didn't get they didn't get handled with care as much as as we would a civilian airplane. So it's got some bumps and some bruises from okay. its service life. So it's got a little bondo. Here and there, when they when they put it in the forestry service markings, um, we've we've removed the the whole the vertical fin and the horizontal stabilizer has been off, or is off now to, to strip it properly and inspect the structure underneath of it. And okay. one You're of the one of the things that we did come out yeah. with that one of the notable items was the horizontal stabilizer had never been off of the airplane. It still had the original 1952 Cessna bolts holding the tail okay. on. And you can and, show us some of that. Right? Yeah. So you can see the horizontal stabilizer set right on top of here. It's got two bolts that go into this aft bulkhead and four bolts that go into this attach angle. It's what, okay. That's what holds it on. The, the paint on top of this is that this area is covered with the tail when you put it on. Okay. So there's no way to ever see this once it's ah. put together. So this is the original Army, Army olive drab okay. that the airplane came out of the factory with. And the bottom of the horizontal in this same vicinity was still in its original uh, drab. Okay, so we hadn't seen the light of day for a long time. Right. Okay. So one of the discoveries that we made while we were doing that is that there's there's no access holes if you climb inside the fuselage. There's no access holes from this bulkhead back to this last bulkhead where the tail wheel attaches. Okay. So there's no access except taking the tail off, and we just we just documented the tail's never been off. So, so the inside of this piece had two inches of debris and, oh, and silt really? and dirt and okay. crud inside there you and it plugged right? up all the drain holes and it had been building up over time. Wow. And I don't think you'd ever would have noticed that, you know, just by yeah. routine maintenance of the airplane, you climb underneath and look at the bottom, it all looks fine. And even if you notice the drain hole was plugged, if you push something in there right. to open it up, it's still... It's th you're going to go this thick before you get to the air. So, so. it was pretty silted up. It, it right? was pretty silted up. So and back in here is where you found that uh, bullet casing. Yeah, the, right? the 45 spent casing was right up against this bulkhead back inside. Okay. So it had rattled its way back as FOD, rattled its way back as far as it could go. I'd still like to know the story on that. Yeah. Somebody had some fun. Uh, okay, we've got... Uh, Fort Worth Aviation Museum says it looks good, Jim and Lanny. Great. Okay. okay. We're glad to see that. Yep. So as we look back into the detail shop here, we can see the, okay. this is the engine cowling, the top cowling, the bottom cowling, the horizontal stabilizers on that sawhorse over there, the door and the wingtip and the vertical fin are leaning up against those other wings over there. And we're, we're in the process of still doing some, some more stripping detail parts. Okay. And so the, is this is a heatable room so we can... We can do little parts when okay. it's cooler. So when you finish the stripping, is that is this metal what it looks like when the paint's been, st or have you uh, done something to burnish this a little? No, we haven't. That, that's the finished product that's from the just the stripping okay. process. And so what will you do with this before you paint it? Well, we'll go over it probably with Scotch-Brite in this case because it's okay. in really, really good shape. If we would have found corrosion, and you can actually see a little bit right here, you can see around these fastener holes, this is th these were these were uh, three sixteenths bolts with washers that screw into nut plates on the firewall, okay. and you can see where the steel washer was against the aluminum. Yeah, 
yeah. and it made like a little battery and so it makes a little corrosion spot around each one of those holes so those will be kind of burnished out with a with like a little scotch bright pad on a wheel and polish polish the corrosion off of it okay the rest of it will probably just be hand rubbed with scotch bright and then we'll we'll etch it before we prime paul, it paul says he's not getting audio but we've got good signal here so i'm not uh I'm not certain what's going on with the audio. Is, uh, mm. Everybody else getting audio? Give me a thumbs up if you're hearing us okay. Yeah, a thumbs up or a like or something just okay. so I get some indication here. Because we're, it, it appears here that we've got, uh, we've got a good, uh, good signal. So at any rate, we're going to go ahead and continue along. Uh, anything else back here you'd like to show us? Oh. Oh, we're getting good thumbs up. So okay. So it, it must have been somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good audio on my end. Okay, okay, Mike, thanks. All right, good. Okay. Uh, let's see, there was some other obvious repair work on the on the landing gear on this, on the other side here. Yes, and yeah, there oh, was. How about the glass? What is, what's your plans for the glass? Uh, we're probably starting as, as early as today when the rest of the team shows up, we're going to start uh, removing all the skylight glass, I call it, all the overhead okay. glass. Okay. So that's all, it's all riveted in with eighth inch solid shank rivets, so it's a lot of drilling. I bet there's oh, wow. 200 rivets per piece okay. of glass, and there's there's six pieces of glass, so there's a lot of rivets to drill now out. Now, you're not going to try to save any of that glass, right? No, no, okay. it's a lot easier to just replace it. It's, it's, okay. uh, it's 080, I've looked it all up, it's 080 thick regular plexiglass okay so there's no so it's commercially available okay. nothing, special. nothing special it's not formed or molded it's just flat okay flat panel okay. so we've got the we've got uh, raw stock already ordered for all of the windows we got Kelvin uh, Kelvin is asking us is that bird dog a combat veteran sorry if you've already answered that uh, the simple answer is Kelvin we don't know uh, it has the potential of being one but uh, We've never done well in terms of finding the records on this airplane, and we'd love to get better records on this airplane. Uh, when Lanny and his crew gets to uh, uh, to the livery on it, we're going to put it in Air Force livery, the gray, basic gray. One side will be uh, red marker uh, markings. Those were the original uh, Ford Air Controllers, Air Force Ford Air Controllers in Southeast Asia. And the other side will be the uh, Wilbanks marking uh, for Hilliard Wilbanks when he... Uh, was awarded the uh, the, the uh, Medal of Honor. So, I, oh, one thing I did want to show everybody, you can see here that this airplane was designed so that the windows tilted, were on an angle. So, uh, interestingly, when you're in the airplane, you can really see over the side of the airplane, which was surprising to me how good the visibility is in yeah. this airplane. Yeah, we jokingly say you can look down and not get your hair messed up, yeah, right? Because right. it's the way the fuselage leans out. Yeah. So we were talking earlier about the the repairs. On the you can see here, in on this gear, you can see this big patch. Yeah. That's been added behind behind the gear, and there's another little repair right here. The way this this gear is is basically just a big piece of spring steel. It's, okay. It's a five eighths thick. Is it one piece that goes all it's, the way to it's the a, other side? It's a two-piece gear, okay. so it comes up, it makes a break, and it goes straight in, and there's a single bolt at the end of it that holds it from moving inboard and outboard, and then there's a clamp that grabs it this way. Okay. And what happens, typically, what causes this kind of damage is somebody lost control with the airplane and did a, a classic ground loop, I could call it, for okay. a tailwheel airplane. It, when you put a hard side load on this gear, it breaks that clamp that holds that okay. gear, and the gear pivots on that bolt and it folds back against the side of the fuselage. All right. And that, that's that's typical of what happens is that gear has come back through here and cut through this structure at some time. Okay. And possibly the one on the other side might have broken forward. Okay. Okay. It's not unusual to see that type of repair on on the. All any basically any of the the Cessna tail dragger airplanes, so they're all okay. the same. The Cessna 140, the 170, the 180, the 190, 195 series, they all have the same gear design. So if when when there's a failure, they have the same okay. damage. We've got another interesting airplane right behind you here. And uh, maybe you'd like to talk about that a little bit, because these two airplanes are kind of bookends, aren't they? The, absolutely, absolutely. The airplane in the background there is a 1945 Stinson L5, which was the predecessor to 
the O-1 bird dog. The, it was a, it's a World War II design that was in service all the way until the middle of the Korean conflict where the L-19 took its place. Okay. So, um, so it's wood and wooden fabric, right? Yes, it's got a, a classic welded steel tubing framed fuselage with wooden sparred wings with wooden ribs and fabric covered. It was, it was the, the kind of the standard design of light planes prior to World War II. And then uh, the, the, the military put out a contract for a, what they called a heavy li liaison airplane okay. at the time. Up until that point, they had been using civilian airplanes effectively painted green, you know, a J-3 Cubs or okay. the Taylor Crafts or yeah. Aronicas. So they needed something with a little bit more umph. The, uh, the, the, the L-Birds, the Grasshopper series that they called them, like the L-4, the, the Cub or the Aronicas, kind of put it in perspective to people. That was, a, that was about a 900-pound airplane with a 65-horsepower engine on it. Okay. The L-5 is a 1,500-pound airplane with a 200-horse engine on it. So it's bigger, heavier. It's, it was designed for military use. It's got a heavy-duty gear. Um, the bottoms of the wings, for example, are plywood covered so that it can run through brush and, oh, and, okay. and run, uh, okay. fly off of unimproved fields and things like that. I've got, I've got a question here from Mike James, and he's talking about the clamp that you were talking about here. He says, is the, is the clamp intended to allow the, the gear to break away like that to potentially reduce the risk uh, to more catastrophic damage to the airplane? It, it, is, it is a breakaway feature, yes. Okay. He's right. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it is designed to fail right there. So, I'm, I mean, for these airplanes, these are, um, this is the way they built airplanes. So the whole idea of ground looping airplanes wasn't new. Oh, special. Yeah. <laughs> it was, that had been going on for a long, long mm -hmm. time. Yeah, so the, they, they, did, they did design it that way so it had that kind of breakaway feature. And, and that effectively, you know, you know my, and I know Mike, he's an he's a, he's a aeronautical engineer. Oh, okay. And okay. so he, he'll, 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 he can relate to this, but okay. if, you, if, you, you move a, if you move a, a weak point or, or harden a weak point, it moves a weak point someplace else. Okay. So, okay. you know, a chain's only as strong as its weakest link. So, yeah. we created a weak link there, but it also inadvertently caused another problem. When it, when the gear when the gear fails, you don't hurt the gearbox inside, but you usually break the back of this bulk. This there's the bulkhead right here. You can see this double row of oh, rivets. Yeah, sure. You usually tear out the back of that bulkhead. That's easier to replace than the gearbox, but by today's standards, you know, I'm, I'm sure when they designed this airplane, they figured they were gonna get 10 years worth of service out yeah. of it, and then they were gonna retire them. You know, 70 years later, okay. we're trying to find replacement parts for these little pieces. They yeah. don't exist yeah. anymore, so. Well, we're up here towards the front of the airplane. Let's talk about the engine a little bit, and what you think we're gonna have to okay. do with that. Well, the, uh, the, the engine hasn't run in quite a while. Yeah, I think Probably see that. five or six years. Uh, the good news is it's got chrome, chrome line cylinders, which is uh, basically on, on aircraft engines or air cooled engines. They're typically they're steel barreled cylinders, and so as they wear out, the re to to put them back into service or to overhaul them, they bore out the inside of the cylinder wall, chrome plate it, okay. and it's not crime, it's not shiny, it's not shiny bumper chrome. Okay. It's, it's chromium, which is a really hard, hard metal. Okay. They chrome plate the inside of it and rebore it, so you basically build it back up again and then bore it back to the original size. Oh, all right. And so that, but that, what that really does is it makes the cylinder walls really hardened compared to bare steel that they were before. Okay. And then you change the rings out with a softer uh, material, so that the rings wear into the cylinder walls. Okay. Uh, the, what size the, engine is this? Th this is a, a Continental 0470-11, okay. 210 horsepower, All right. which is like 15 more horsepower than the World War II version of the airplane had. All the right. L5 is 195 horsepower. Okay. This is 210. The, uh, the L19, or 01 Bird Dog, is a 1,600-pound empty weight airplane compared to 1,500 pounds for the L5. So they're very, very comparable airplanes in in size and weight. The bird dog's got a little bit, just a little bit more horsepower. 
and, and it's actually got a lot more equipment. It's got a vacuum pump to run engine, okay. run, run air, uh, instruments in the cockpit. And it's got an alternator instead of a generator. So it's got a little bit more modern technology okay. in it. I noticed the L5 got more glass. Yeah, it does. But I noticed the, the glass on the side is, is canted, it's angled. Yeah. Just like it is on this one. So you can see a lot of the things that they took from this design and, mm -hmm. and put it into this yeah. model airplane. The, well, as an observation airplane, there's the, you, there, you, you can't have too much glass. Right, you know. right. Now, I, I would point out one of the things that, would, that causes it, that bird dog to have less glass over, overhead is that this is a, uh, a pure monocoque designed structure. So there is no welded steel tubing that that creates the the bones of the airplane so to speak okay this is the skin is the structure on a monocoque airplane so you've got the sheet metal that makes the exterior shell is where the main load path goes and then there's there's some structure that's usually bent sheet metal like the audience can see looking inside there so you couldn't have as much glass because you still need the, some of the structure, some of the skin to transfer the loads between the wings and, okay. and down to the fuselage. So we've got a pretty bare bones cockpit here, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, oh, will motor work be done in-house or will it be sent out? Well, it, it depends on what we discover. Okay. So That's fair. Yeah. What, what the plan is going to be is that we're going to... Uh, Kind of, kind of unpickle the engine. We'll pull all the all the spark plugs out. We'll uh, we've got a new ignition harness, so we'll put new new uh, spark plug wires, if you will. In aircraft terminology is ignition harness. Okay. So we'll put new spark plug wires on it. We'll put new spark plugs in it. Before we do that, we'll uh, we'll change the oil. Uh, we'll put Marvel Mystery oil. If anybody's familiar with that, it's, it's kind of like red hydraulic fluid or it's a, it's a lubricant. We'll put Marvel Mystery Oil in the cylinders and then we'll spin it with the starter with no spark plugs in it. So there's no compression. So the, oh, it'll okay. just whistle away and everything okay. will move real fast with no resistance. And we'll kind of repolish the cylinder walls that way. Oh, okay. And okay. we'll get it all cleaned up and then we'll blow them out. And then we'll put the spark plugs in and put some fuel in it, see if we can get it to run. Okay. We'll, we'll run it up. If well, I'm pretty sure it, it'll start, it'll run. Whether it runs well or not, it's another story. But yeah. it'll start, it'll run. We'll get it hot, and then we'll do a compression test. Maybe after a second run, we may okay. have to clean the plugs again. Then we'll do a compression test, and then we'll have some data to be able to make a decision with what the next step is with the engine. And we were talking about pretty much leaving the cockpit as is, keeping it pretty much original. I yes. Think. Yeah. It. Well, the, that's the whole idea of restoring an old airplane yeah. is to make it look like it did when it came out of the factory or as close to it. So along with the project, we discovered a box that you may well know that has a whole new set of interior in it. So we have all the panels that go on the inside. It oh, has, no, I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, it actually okay. has a, a, an upholstered interior, so to speak. It oh, has a, a basic upholstered panels or some soundproofing that goes in there. So we have all, all new upholstery to go in it. And uh, and obviously once we once we put power to it and we start running the engine, then we'll we'll be able to diagnose what kind of shape the engine instruments are in, and and uh, there's some basic tests we can do on some flight instruments. I mean, there's there's nothing really sophisticated about the instrumentation in this airplane. It's it's a basic what right. we'd call a needle ball and airspeed kind of airplane. It's got an altimeter and an airspeed indicator and a turn and bank a tachometer and a and an oil temperature and an oil pressure gauge, and that's that's pretty much it. Well, I'm looking forward to it flying again because I, I rode in the back seat when we brought this back from uh, from North Carolina, and I know one of the things I found was interesting is the back seat can face forward or back. Right. Yeah. And that's what, whatever the job is going to entail. Then. So. Yeah. Somebody um, can well, the guy in front's seeing where you're going, and the guy in back can turn around and see where you've been. Yeah. So we'll see how the hits took. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so what do you think the timeline is here right now? Well, we're, I, I'd say we're still tracking pretty well for a, a, a late spring completion. I bet, we, okay. I bet we have it done before it hits 100 degrees. Let's put it that way. Well, that'd be nice. Uh, we, yeah. we have a reunion coming up in the fall, and it would be really nice if we could, we could fly this and put some old bird dog people back in an airplane. And, and yeah, that, that would be fantastic. So we're, we're pretty much reaching the end of our time here. If anybody's got any questions before we, uh, we leave Lanny, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and ask those now. 
apparently the sound has worked pretty good today, and uh, we have, we've had a pretty good audience. We've had uh, up to about 15 or 16 people here at one point in time. So, yeah. take a hike and look at the wings. Yeah, let's take a quick look at the wings. I'm just going to hang left door. Yeah, so this is this is the rest of the airplane. We've been looking at the fuselage and the tail. Okay. So, so this is the uh, the wings, and then over on this blanket over here are the the flaps and the ailerons and the elevators and the lift struts. And as you can see, most everything's oh, pretty much over. through the stripping process on these. How are the gas tank covers coming? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're transparent at yeah, the present we time. we have. That's been one of the mysteries here, that uh, the gas tank covers disappeared uh, from the museum, and so we're going to have to do something about that. But uh, otherwise, I guess uh, you can fabricate those, right? Yeah. Well, there's, there's one of the good things about, about a, a bird dog is that there are, a, there are quite a few parts around. So uh, if, if we have to replace them, if they can't be located or they accidentally got used for something else at the museum, then... Uh, it's not the end of the world. We can get we can get another set. That all looks great to me. I mean, it's a, for for all of us. It's been a long time coming to, to do this and to be able to get this airplane airborne again is uh, is going to be a real treat. Is this another L five? Yeah, this this is an L, another L five. I don't really see that. It's all the surprises here in the hangar with with Lanny. So so this is kind of the beginning. Uh, uh, the beginning, beginning of forward air control, and then uh, then where it was in Korea, and then uh, all the way to Vietnam. So this is uh, this is really kind of cool here. So we were talking earlier about maybe being able to uh, uh, maybe being able to do something with the with some formation flying with the bird dog and some other airplanes. Yeah. So at any rate, yeah, let's see. I think from uh, Cowtown Aerocrafters, unless you've got anything else you'd like to do today. No, that's. Uh, from the Cowtown Aero Crafters here in Justin, Texas, I'd like to thank uh, Lanny and his crew for the work they're doing here. Uh, hope you all uh, have enjoyed this uh, this session, and I think we've got our audio pretty well worked out. So we are going to go back to uh, we're going to redo a bunch of the old ones where the where the audio was bad. But for mm -hmm. now, everybody stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right.